Oh, I guess we should get to it, guys. Monday morning, it comes uh, every single week, but we're here. We're answering questions from inside the Weld app. If you guys have any questions about welding, fabrication, what it may be, go to the Weld app, ask those questions in the main feed. You're gonna get an answer from either myself or plenty of other welders. This week's question comes from Georgie inside the app. He's showing us a root picture of his TIG welded pipe, and he's asking, how can he get more consistent with his root pass? Now looking at this video, Georgie, you got the fundamentals figured out. That one side is freaking slick. You got some nuggets on one end, so it's just telling me that we need to talk about consistency and what to be looking out for. So it's my favorite subject, TIG welding on pipe. Let's get to it. Georgie, we are going to start from the beginning. So uh, this is probably something that you already know, but for those of you that don't, let's get into it. The pipes that we're going to be welding today are going to be some six inch schedule 80. And the first thing that you got to do is make sure you've got a nice straight bevel. It's got to have nice clean edges. That bevel needs to be the right angle the whole way around, perfectly square. And we want that edge to be nice and sharp if you're using some sort of beveler. The next thing is we gotta prep it. We're TIG welding this thing, guys, so we wanna make sure that we're clean inside and out. Anywhere there's gonna be some molten metal touching, it's gotta be nice and shiny. It's gonna help the weld quality. It's gonna help the weld pull. It's gonna weld easier if the material is clean. So that's the first step, getting these dirty coupons into something nice and shiny and ready to weld. And then we get into the fit up. Fit up is simple. It is a little bit of preference, but in the field, you never know what you're gonna get. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit about your fit. Anyway, if we had an ideal situation, I'm gonna go for a 532nd gap or 316th gap, no land. This is some thick wall pipe, so there's no need to put a land on this. There's plenty of heat sink on it. Uh, we're gonna run about a 35 degree bevel. So if I was working on some thinner wall or maybe some something else, I might put just a skosh of a land on there, but for this, Knife edge it all the way. Once we got it fit, we're ready to weld. Hey man, come on in. Welcome to Arc Labs. I'm here to learn about some welding. All right, let's get you sorted out. Arc Labs accepts FASFA, VA benefits, and scholarships. And with one stroke of a pen, you can get started in your welding career right away. Arc Labs will also provide you with everything you need to get started on your first day in the welding lab. Great instructors will get you started right away with some one-on-one -on -one training, anywhere from beginner welding to intermediate levels. And they'll be there with some words of encouragement when things get tough. And trust me, they're going to get tough. And in no time, you'll be welding in some real-world scenario simulators, as well as working together as a team conquering those real world simulations so you can be ready for the real world. Don't wait to start your professional career as a welder. Join the Arc Labs team today. Get blazing. Well, that looks ready to go. Now this isn't the best fit I've ever done. I like to be able to get inside on the bottom. I want that wire to stick through there. That's gonna be really important to me as if, if it doesn't go through the top, I actually kind of prefer that, especially for starting out. That'll keep gravity from collapsing those bevel edges a little bit easier. And you'll be able to hold on and go a little slower to really let that bead sink in. We're using a standard 150 amp TIG torch today. I got a number 10 cup on here, jumbo with a little uh, stubby back cap. That's my go-to. 2% 2 thoriated tungsten. We're running the ESAB Rebel 285 IAC scratch start 90 amps. We're ready to put this root in. Now my dude didn't have any problems as far as getting a bead in the pipe. That wasn't it. He wants to know how to be more consistent. I'm just going to give you my method of the madness here. I like to, as far as a 5G weld, again, I like to have that wire being able to have the ability to go through the back. A lot of people think that you need a back feed from here all the way on the opposite side of the pipe. That is difficult. You lose location about where you're at. So I like to keep that, uh, use the side tack, brace that wire up against that side tack, and then feed into it. The biggest thing about a 5G weld is gravity. From the bottom, you're going to be doing some overhead welding, then moving into a vertical and into a flat. Gravity is going to want to let that weld pull. Now, my friend on the app there, he had a big 
nuggets right here on the top side of that pipe. That means gravity let, he put too much wire in there. He fed into it. It just got excessive reinforcement. That's okay to kind of do down here because gravity is going to let it drop. So you want to have a little bit of feed at the bottom, but by the time you start working into that vertical position towards that side tack, you need to be worried about your reinforcement. You don't need to have that wire to the back side anymore you can actually have that wire kind of splitting the difference in the bevels. And being that we have a tighter gap on the top, we're gonna to have the ability to have a really snug fit. That wire's not going through quite all the way compared to the bottom where we have some wiggle room. And that's gonna let that bead sink in, but without letting that wire, uh, that puddle drop. If you let that puddle drop, every time you take your wire out, you've got yourself a nugget. It's gonna have a heavy spot if you pull your wire from the puddle. So. If you, if you do it often enough and it looks consistent, that's fine. The more you can keep that wire connected to your puddle, the smoother this root's gonna look. Well, we got half the bead in there. Now, this isn't the smoothest root out there. It's a little inconsistent. And that's from taking that wire and pulling it in and out, getting in a bind, changing my rod angle, some sort of pattern. Something's just not as consistent as it could be. And that wire's coming out. I'm having to readjust, replace it in. Or if I'm coming up the side and I'm seeing that keyhole open up, the first instinct is to, you know, push in, fill that keyhole up. But really what we need to do is try to just bridge, get wider. Get wider with it, but don't let it drop. Don't let it drop. It's already going to give you the reinforcement you need as you go from the side towards the top. So we've got a little bumps and humps in here, and that's from starting and stopping, trying to get some camera angles and all that kind of good stuff. But we're going to do this other side real quick, and we're going to go from bottom to top, and we're not going to stop it all. We're going to see how smooth it can be. Woo wee, man, it's hot. We got our bead in there, and as you can see by the coloration, that's from not having to start or stop or slow down in any particular area. We've, we had a nice gap where that wire didn't come through the top and we were to lay wire the top, back feed the bottom. I did end up having to stop on this weld though. It just seemed too cold. There was something going on, so I, went, I had to stop. I had to turn it up, and then even inspecting, I found out that I even had some cold wire, but nothing a little bit of little bit of tricky uh, TIG work can't fix. So we were able to pull that back, smoothing out that root. And again, when it comes to a smooth, clean, consistent root, you got a well smooth, clean, and consistent. No starts, no stops. Your tacks, don't put heavy tacks in. Make sure you're cleaning those up uh, or cutting them out, depending on how bad they may be. Maybe you got a, a weld with some bad tacks in it. To have a clean, even root, you got to feed a little bit more at the bottom, less on the side and less on the top. The top you let sink, the sides you got to get up and around. Uh, in the bottom, you got to feed into it to get that consistent root all the way through. I hope this helped answer your question, buddy. Guys, if y'all have any other questions, be sure to go answer them inside the weld app. But we're not done yet here. I'm actually going to continue this video because we're going to go ahead and combo weld this 5G. It's already out. We're going to continue welding. I'm going to hop past this with TIG and fill and cap with 7018. But you're not going to see it here. You got to go check it out over on the weld app, guys. I'll finish this pipe up and do the do's and don'ts of a 5G combo weld. But hey, if you got any questions, go ask them in the app, man. It's free stuff.